Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and uh, let me tell you what old Tubal Cain's up to today. I'm standing before the Atlas Craftsman 12-inch lathe, and my project is going to be a new carriage stop. Now, this is the uh, factory-made Atlas carriage stop, and I do not like the position of it. You cannot see it. So you see how dark it is down there? So with 10,000 candle power on it, you can finally see it. But from a bird's eye view, where the operator is standing, it's pretty much out of sight. It's also most obtuse to try to get in there without getting on your knees and tighten down the two screws. And then, even when you tighten down the screws, because this is a flatbed lathe rather than a V-bed, a V-ways, uh, there's a marked tendency for this to cock on you. So the entire design of this is bad and I'm going to design a new one and attempt to make it and see what you think. Generally when I use a carriage stop <clears throat> I'm working fairly close to the chuck jaws and if you look down from my uh, vantage point here you see this is it's kinda hard to get at and you can't even see the bolts so this is my complaint on this. Now if I was using a collet uh, attachment on there that even shortens up this distance more and puts the carriage top farther back and I'm trying to remedy this this is the closing lathe and it has V ways but uh, you see how much easier it is to get at this uh, carriage stop even when it's way back in that position and it cannot cock because it is clamped to a V so that's great design but you know, how are you going to do it with a flatbed lathe? So, I'm trying to think out of the box a little bit. I actually own two different Atlas carriage stops. And I don't know which is the, the later version. But this one is far more massive <coughs> than this one. And this one clamps with two bolts in an attempt to keep it from cocking. But I tell you, you really got to crank on those. And this one, I'm thinking maybe this is the older one because it has just one bolt and would have more of a tendency to, to cock on you when you hit it with the, uh, with the carriage. Now I do very much like the uh, micrometer dials on both of these and mine will not have it, at least not my initial version. But uh, that's, that's pretty nice, that micrometer dial. And I'm not going to get rid of these. And I'm not going to throw them away. Do not worry, I'm not going to throw them away. And some of you just have a fit every time I throw anything away, but let me tell you something. When something is bad or is worn out it, or dull, it needs to be either immediately repaired or thrown out. And I don't know why it is so many of you disagree with me on that. Uh, possibly you are pack rats, although I am a bit of one myself. So that's not a derogatory term. So these go on the shelf for a while and then uh, let's take a look at uh, my new approach. Often when I'm making something I make a prototype out of wood or plastic or some material that I can fabricate uh, very quickly and it, uh, I don't work too much with blueprints, I, I should and then draw things out but I, I tend to like to just start making them and uh, so that's why I make a prototype. Now this didn't take very long to make out of wood and the idea here is that uh, this is T-shaped, T-shaped like this. It's kind of like a T-bolt in a way. And it goes between the uh, ways here, the flat ways. There will, of course, be a piece on the bottom to clamp it, to hold it in position, and a, and a bolt, probably two bolts, so they will not interfere with this, the stop bolt. Now I haven't decided yet whether this will be threaded or a straight rod uh, with the set screw to hold it, but probably the latter to make it easier. Again, no micrometer just yet. And this is made rather sloppily and then I, uh, if necessary sometimes, I just glue or nail a piece on there to increase the, the thickness of the material that I'm working with. But that will clamp on there. It can easily be moved back and forth to wherever you want it. Clamp it tight as can be and then when the carriage comes up against it, it'll be stopped. Now remember that with carriage stops, never ram against them under power with the longitudinal feed. 
They are meant to be brought up to by hand, possibly using the carriage feed until you get close to it, kick the feed off and bring it up by hand because if you crash against the carriage stop something's got to give especially on an atlas lathe where there is no clutch and there's strictly a, a half nut uh, and something's going to break or give and a lot of damage is done to machines using carriage stops or having crashes with it but this is the idea now I'm going to make this out of uh, aluminum if the weather wasn't so terribly cold here in northern Illinois, I would make a foundry pattern and go out in my fair weather foundry and cast a couple of these real quick. And that would speed things up. But instead I'm going to make this out of cold rolled aluminum. Of course it could also be made of steel. If you got a welder you could even fabricate it out of several pieces to reduce the machining or bolt some of these different pieces of metal together because you may not have material thick enough to make this. So you got to make do sometimes with what you have in the shop. Let's step over to the bench. This is aluminum. It's a 1033 640 AA PLP extender, whatever that is, but I have four of them, and a strictly scrap, and there are several holes in it, and I have to work around the holes, but what I'm going to do is, I, you know, I've got to amputate it here to get rid of this hole, so I'm going to cut it along there, and uh, on, the, on the bandsaw here in the basement, that's no easy job. This thing is still as cold as an ice cube, because I brought it in out of the garage. But it just so happens this is inch and a half by four inches. It's a little thicker than what I got here, but I think it's going to be just fine. It's a little wider than what I got, but that's going to be fine, or I can reduce it. But I'm trying to machine as little as possible. So I, to start with, I'm just going to cut it to the same width approximately as this and uh, uh, proceed to machine it out. So I'm going to lay it out and then go over to the bandsaw. I'm at the vertical bandsaw and I've got about a half hour's worth of cutting. It's too cold to go out in the garage and use my big Kalamazoo saw, so I'm resorting to the vertical bandsaw. And it's slow going, but it certainly beats a hacksaw. Well there it is roughed out and that was no small job believe me with that sawing with a semi dull blade I need to change that blade or I'd like to have had a skip tooth blade and I've already uh, milled both sides just to clean it up get rid of all the saw marks and just take it down to a nominal width now I'm going to lay it off such that I'm ready to mill the uh, uh, not slots but the, the notch in it the bed ways on my atlas lathe are 500 thousandths thick, that's a half inch, but not all atlas lathes are the same. For instance, Bob Bigelow of Cody, Wyoming has an atlas lathe that has 3 eighths thick ways, so be sure if you're going to make one of these that you measure that. So the height gauge is set for 475. Repeating myself, the bed ways here are 500 thousandths thick, and then using a caliper right here, the distance between them is 2.750. So those are important dimensions. This material is 4 inches long, and if we subtract uh, the distance between the two uh, ways, which is uh, 2.750, we end up with one and a quarter, and half of that, of course, is 5 eighths. So I have the height gauge set at 5 eighths to mark this. And that's from both sides. And that's going to leave me with the uh, 2.750 between those lines. And now I'm stepping over to the uh, Bridgeport mill and I'm going to mill these notches out. If you want to bandsaw those out that could be done too to save a little time but I, with my dull blade I don't think it's going to save me. 
I'm at the Bridgeport Mill. I've got a three-quarter inch cutter. The work is up on parallel, so you can see the layout lines here. And I'm just going to start cutting away. And I like to stay a little bit away from the lines, and then at the very end I get closer to the line, and that's when I start doing my measuring. I've got most of the material off. Now be sure and turn the machine off when you use measuring tools around a, a milling machine. Have your glasses on. So I'm checking uh, the depth there and I've got uh, seven thousandths to go to bring it to uh, 475 so I'm going to raise the knee seven thousandths. And uh, there we are. done and regarding that length there in the middle I will uh, measure from the other end and I don't think I'll have to come back down to this end but it may be necessary to come down and take a little bit more off of that but I am right to the layout line. I'm almost to the line so I'm going to take a reading here and I've got uh, 2769 so I'm going to use the digital readout and move it in. Uh, I got to do the math here. About you know, it's about twenty thousandths, and then that's my last pass. That hole you see there that I'm milling through uh, was already in the stock. As you recall, this was a piece of uh, I guess you'd call waste stock. There it is, I'm down to size. I, of course, will confirm that before I take it out of the machine. Never take it out of the machine until you're sure you're on your dimensions because you can't get it back exactly the same. The milling is done, and this is what it looks like so far. Slides nicely within the, the uh, ways. And now my two... Uh, holes will be here, one, two, for the bottom plate that's going to go on there. Now I believe this is way too thick at this point. I'm going to take some off the top. I don't know how much yet. Perhaps a quarter inch. As it looks kind of big and cloddy. And then uh, of course there's going to be a hole here for the stop rod. I think I'll drill these holes next. Perhaps 5 sixteenths. I have drilled a 5 sixteenths hole through. And have it marked here to uh, drill 1364 tap quarter 20. The set screw to uh, lock the rod. The rod will have to have a flat on it. And these two holes are drilled 5 sixteenths to hold the clamping block on the bottom. I made a 5 16 uh, round rod, flattened one side of it for the set screw, rounded the end that is going to hit the uh, uh, carriage. That's of course going to go in like this. With a set screw right on here. And uh, I've just cut inch and a half wide, hot rolled, quarter inch thick. I just happen to have some. And I need to transfer those holes with a transfer punch. Equal distance, of course. And then I will uh, drill them quarter inch and tap them 5 sixteenths 18. And here's what I've got up to this point. Got the holes drilled and tapped in the bottom piece. Got some bolts in there. These bolts are too long. I'll probably have to go to the hardware store and get some of the right length or else saw them off, but they're kind of rusty. I don't like them. Now, uh, for a set screw here, 
I'm using a square head uh, type of set screw. I did have a thumb screw, but I thought, well, that might not hold because you can't take the chance of this pushing back on you or you have defeated the whole purpose of the stop. Now let's go over to the lathe and see how it fits. And there it is. It can be moved back and forth, of course, any place you want it. The rod can be shortened if I need to, and it'll tighten up. And then I can adjust the rod if I want to. And then this is going to clear, and you can hear it solidly hit. Now the downsides are that uh, it's absolutely essential that the lathe be turned off when you're getting in there to make adjustments to it. You wouldn't even want to think about doing this while the chuck is revolving, whether you're tightening these or the center screw. Also it is going to be a chip collector. That's a given. So what do you think? I might refine it a little bit yet by rounding these corners just a little bit. And uh, there we go. We've got a tuple cane design carriage stop for the Atlas lathe. This is Tubal Cane saying so long for now.